This Good Morning America ABC News special, D-Day, June 6th, 1944, continues. The WAC has done a man's job on the Fifth Army Front. Pioneers who have set an example for women at home. Hundreds more are needed on this front alone. The Women's Army Corps, it was just one of four services for women created by Congress in 1942. The idea, of course, was to free up the men and mostly do stateside jobs, but a lot of women did go overseas to work. Among them, my next three guests, Sue Jell, was a personal secretary to the Allies' Supreme Commander, General Eisenhower. Paula Newman Burroughs was a staff sergeant assigned to work with the British on intelligence for the D-Day invasion. And Mabel Stover, who believes she was the first whack to land on the beaches out there in Normandy, by plane, I should say, three days after D-Day. And she joins us from the American Cemetery in Colville. And I welcome all of you. Sue, I want to start with you because I want to take you back to before D-Day, and I want to know what those days were like and what Eisenhower's concerns were as he tried to make that overwhelming decision. Um, his main con concern was the welfare of the men. He was um, very, very, very worried about the casualties that were going to happen and um, about the de decisions they were making, whether or not to go or not to go because of the bad weather. And some of those casualties were expected going in to be so yes. very high, 70, yes. 80 percent. Right. I know he went out at one point and he, he was talking with the men, the night, I think trying to check on their morale, yes. et cetera. What, tell the us about that. The night before, he went to visit the 101st Airborne troops. And uh, it did a lot of good for their morale. They loved him. He had a lot of charisma. But when he came back, he was terribly sad mm. after he visited, saw them, and he didn't know what was going to happen. It was to noticeable though, to those oh, yes. or all of you that he was oh, visibly oh. shaken? Yes, yeah. to us, but not when he was with the men. Mm. Paula, what are your remembrances? How did you know that the war had started? Well, at that point in time, we heard the planes go over in the middle of the night. We looked out, and the sky was completely black. That throughout the morning and we knew it had begun. And then the general did kind of make an announcement over the PA system that the invasion was on. And Mabel Stover, I think that they've made, uh, it was a makeshift runway that they did actually out on the beach, right? Tell me about you coming in on the runway. We came in on the runway on D-Day plus three to interrogate the first uh, high-ranking German officer that was captured. We found him on the beach sitting on a log. The landing was rough, but we managed to get in. And it was an absolutely awesome sight for me. What kind of a reaction did you get? Were there any French people around, people who lived in the area? Yes, I did manage to see one French woman. We uh, had been in a Jeep at the time, and she, we, the Jeep was stopped, and she ran up and threw her arms around me, kept saying, merci beaucoup, merci beaucoup. Were you scared? I beg your pardon? Were you scared? No, not a bit. Well, you had a lot of Americans around you at that point. Yes, that's right. The beach was secured pretty well. You know, those boys move fast. Hmm. I have here something here with me that I really want to show everyone. I've actually, I've never held one of these before. This is a bronze star. Paula, this is yours, and you received this for the work that you did on intelligence. And I know that you worked collecting Three. a lot of information. What kind of information did you put, put into these books in order to help the GIs? Well, this all came from uh, captured documents, and we researched every town and village and oh. hamlet so that when the troops got there, they would know what to expect and what facilities would be available to them. I can just say I'm looking at here. I'm, I can see here as what city I go into, what main roads, railroad stations, where the post office is, where the police station is. And the billets and everything else, what natural agriculture, airfields, pumps, fire department, everything. I just need to know one thing. I mean, we all refer to him these days as Ike, but did you ever hear anyone call General Eisenhower Ike? <laughs> Never. Never? We referred to him as the boss. The boss. <laughs> but we spoke to him as general. But when we talked amongst ourselves, he was the boss. You were here when it all began? Yes. What are your feelings yes. today? Um, it's been very emotional. Yeah. Um, watching TV for the last two weeks, I've cried through the whole thing. And then yesterday when they unveiled the statue, it was very, very emotional for everyone. 
but important to remember and to yeah. remind a whole new generation, yes. right? Yes, yes. And I'm so glad they're interested. I didn't think anybody would be interested 50 years later. And I'm very pleased that they still are. Well, 50 years later, we remember all of you who were so involved and all those people who gave their lives for the freedom of everyone here and everyone back home. Thank you very much. And Mabel Stover over there in Colville, thank you very much. And our continued coverage of D-Day will be back in just a moment.